Welcome back, everybody. Oh, as you can see behind me, we have two, two Husqvarna saws. So what are they? Let's go check it out. All right, folks. So what we have is a special treat. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, I know. There's a lot of channels that put a lot of uh, cinematic thing in. I I'm not. I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy that sets up the shot. I'm not the guy that's going to put the music behind their videos. I'm not that guy that's going to, you know, have those swooping shots. Well, I might do some swooping shots, but I'm too excited. Well, you guys know I love my chainsaws. Uh, I love. 435, my 540, the 550, the 562, the 372, and now the 572. Yes. Oh, we're going to get up tight, all this kind of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> for you guys, uh, I do love my chainsaws, and each one of them are a tool, an absolute tool, so they're not a shelf queen. We want absolutely positively use them i cut a ton of firewood during the season um i have i gotta get better at shooting videos outside um when we're uh, bucking uh, firewood and all that kind of stuff but i'm very excited to get in from the old to the new the 372 xp that i've had for probably <sighs> close to uh 20 years uh, it's never let me down to the new model, which is the 572, the one that's um, uh, replacing it. Now, a lot of people have said in the past uh, on other models, the other one was the 346 versus the 550. Uh, you'll notice that the um, 346, which is a 50cc saw, was an absolute screamer. Those guys who ran those saws absolutely positively loved them. When you ported them and you turned them up, holy smokes where they were a screamer. And people said, you will never ever replace that saw. And then the 550 came out. And people said, meh, it's okay, but it's got that crappy auto tune on it and all that kind of stuff. And the first generation of them did have carburetor problems, but since then they've replaced it. Now they have a Mark II version, which is even better than the original. But again, when you take those stock saws and you pour them and you put bigger, you put, you know, high flow mufflers on them and all that kind of stuff, stuff that the factory can't do because of EPA regulations. And when you do it, you shouldn't do it because it's harmful to the environment. And, um, yeah. So, um, so when you crank those saws, those five fifties and you punch out the muffler, you poured it and you rip roar it, man, those guys with the three forty six is going, this is a pretty form formidable saw. So this is what we have now. The old 372, which has been around forever, decades. Uh, it's a wonderful logging saw that those guys run all the time. And when I first purchased mine, I didn't know the legacy of that saw, but uh, it's a magnificent, it's a magnificent saw. So you're asking yourself, well, why'd you get a 572? Well, it's the newer version. And you know, I love my 372. It's gangbusters. But uh, if I can get another 70cc in that class, that 70cc class saw, uh, I'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to put a 28 inch bar on it from the 562, and I'll put the 24 on that on the 562. That 62 is an amazing saw. I got to do a um, re up on that video again. 372 is a legacy saw it's a wonderful saw uh they tried to get rid of it through a couple of other models and people said no 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 you can't do it so i think they may have done it with this 572 i'm not exactly sure but let's get kind of up and personal with this new 572 this is going to be a first impressions um it's it's uh it's nasty outside uh, it's snowing, which is fine. I don't mind going out and cutting in the in the um, uh, in the snow and all that kind of stuff. That's that doesn't bother me at all. But when it gets icy and all that stuff, humping around, uh, you know, 70cc saw with a 28-inch bar on it with spinning chain, 
Um, I'd rather not do that. So let's get a little closer to these and see what we got. All right, so you'll notice on these saws, this is the uh, 372 and this is the 572. I took the bars off uh, just to give us um, a little easier uh, way to uh, take a look at these saws and uh, see what's different, uh, see what has been probably improved or just new design of these days. You'll notice that all of the handle safety switch stuff is all the same. But what the major difference is, is that I'm super happy about is this one switch lever. The old saw had uh, an off and on switch, okay, and then you had a choke. You would pull, you would hit your decompression lever, pull it till it burped, push your clutch in, I mean push your choke in, and then pull it and it would start. Where the new saw now has a pull up and up, okay? That gives you full choke, you hit the decomp lever, you push it till it burps, you flip it down. Now it's in high idle, okay? And then as soon as you pull it, it should start. Um, that I'm very happy about. When you want to turn the saw off, a lot of times I would forget um, when I went to go start the um, saw, is not to turn it on, okay? So you have to turn the ignition on where I, I got used to on the 550, this single switch. So um, a lot of times I would pull and pull and pull and say, hey, idiot, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta turn it on. So that's an improvement that I really, really like. Um, this is much easier to operate than this was. Um, I never did with gloves on, was able to quickly or easily go in there and push it. It was a little finicky for me. Um, another big thing that they've changed on all the new saws nowadays is the old days you had your bar nuts, okay, and they came off. All right, now the new saws, all the new saws now have captive bar nuts. So that when you take your cover off, okay, they stay with the cover okay so you can't lose your bar nuts that's a wonderful thing uh, let's let's leave the uh, clutch covers off for a second and we will get into those in just a second I can't tell you how many bar nuts I have in my uh, backpack that when I go out to the woods because I'll inevitably drop that right into the woods where they are and I'm lost it in the um, I've lost them in the uh, in the leaves. So what we'll notice is both of these saws are three eighths, and they are seven pin. Okay, so this is an internal clutch saw. The new 572 is also an internal clutch saw. Okay, so this is the the sprocket pin for it. Okay, so if you want to change this to say. Uh, um, 8 pin or maybe a 404 or 0.325 gauge when you go to change the bar you have to change the sprocket as well and the way to do that is you take this e-clip off you take this retaining um, uh, washer off and then off comes the sprocket and you can get those sprockets anywhere uh, grease point for the roller bearings is still the same on both saws one thing I did notice on here is that the clutch cover for the new 572 fits perfectly on the old 5372. So the 572's clutch cover fits the 372's clutch cover. Now what's that get for you? Well, um, one, 
it gets you the ability to put a, a different, you know, you'll have to put a, a spike kit because the old 372K had the spike kit that was on the clutch cover itself. You can't take a clutch cover kit off of this saw and run it because you'll notice on this clutch cover there is a lip here, okay? If you want to run this dog on this saw, the spacing is correct, but you have to physically grind down this edge. I don't like that. This is drilled out for a spike that's currently on order. But the reason why this is good is because I like the captive bar nuts. I can update this old 372 and have captive bar nuts. That's a big deal. The clutch cover itself is, um, I'm not sure exactly what it's made out of. If it's a plastic, it might be aluminum. I don't know what material it's out of. Maybe it's plastic. It's probably plastic. Yeah, it is plastic. It is plastic. You can order a, uh, somewhere along the line a heavy duty version of this. Um, that's probably magnesium like you know this one is is um, this old 372 this is metal okay this is probably aluminum where this is this is uh, injection molded plastic because you can see the release mold right there okay can you guys see that where is it see it right there see that ridge right there okay right there that's a little piece of plastic that came off the injection mold in plastic. So, d do I mind that this is plastic? N no, I, I really don't care. But I am going to put it on the old 372 and have these captive bar nuts. And then I'll put an uh, outer spike on here when I go to order another one of these clutch covers. But, so, the old one had a metal. The new one has a plastic. You could probably get a there somewhere in the nomenclature somewhere never been able to find it you can get a heavy duty clutch cover that is probably um, metal it probably comes with the full wrap handlebar and when you get the full wrap handlebar it basically comes with this clutch cover and this dog so when you order the full wrap handle for your 572 you will get if you get the kit you will get a new clutch cover and you will get a dog and it's probably this one, but it is colored silver. So, um, again, the splines, internal clutch. You'll notice that the cylinder uh, decomp lever on this one is on the side where the, top, where the uh, new one is on the top. Um, the inertial handbrake, that one was already... Uh, there you'll notice that that when you go to engage these these are internal both the same they are internal so that even if um, um, if you hit that back of that handle hard enough for these saws if you pick this up and while you're running it you jar it the inertial uh, system of this will activate the brake clutch itself um, so that it's nice and safe. Um, again, if you get kickback, that's designed for this to come and deploy itself. So that's the same. The mufflers are completely different. Okay, on both. Let's see if I can let me get you out of here really quick. So the muffler on the old saw is uh, two ports. Okay. Well. All right, it's attached to the body of the saw. This saw's got many, many, many hours on her. Okay, where the new saw, okay, the outlet is up top. Okay, can you guys see that? Okay, that's where the outlet is, and this is whole sounding body itself. So it comes, the exhaust comes out of the top here which is very good. The big problem with this saw that I have is that the exhaust comes out of these two ports here. Okay? 
So when I'm cutting very dead wood, the exhaust coming out of there is super hot. And I've had many trees that have come up uh, where the punky wood has started to smolder. And that's not very good. Especially when you're out in the woods with a bunch of dead trees. So the fact that this comes and exits the top uh, is much, much better for me. Standard uh, pull cord, just like the other one. Okay primer bulb so let me put you back up here all right good one of my humongous complaints with this saw humongous complaints is when this saw is cold you there's no primer bulb that's on here okay you pull the clutch you can pull and pull and pull and pull and pull and pull and pull, okay? You basically have to suck the fuel out of the tank, into the carburetor, and then into the combustion chamber. And that's a humongous pain in the ass. I hate it. Um, I just, I never have liked that. I understand that there's no failure point there, but as you're wanting to go in the woods and just start cutting, Pulling on that thing forever is a pain in the butt. The new saw, okay, the new saw has a primer bulb. The primer bulb will suck fuel from the tank through the primer bulb and then into the carburetor so that your, your ability to, to have to pull up fresh new fuel into the carburetor is a hundred times better. Um, Instead of having to through um, um, through pull starting it suck up the fuel, this pump will allow you to circle brand new fresh fuel right into the carburetor. Um, this is an awesome thing. I can't wait to start it. Uh, again, this is initial thoughts. There's no um, uh, no fuel or oil in the machine itself. Uh, the other thing that's really good on these new saws, they have these flip caps. Okay, can you guys see those flip caps? Okay, those flip caps are very nice. They will also allow you to put a scrunch in them. Scrunch fits in. If it's too tight, you can scrunch it, which is very, very handy. The old saw came originally with this type. Okay, can you guys see that? They came with that type, okay? And uh, over the years, it's just eaten up. So I put a, uh, another, another type that's in there. These will allow you to take your scrunch and to put it in there and to really crank it down. Um, this over the years is just the, all of the um, years of opening and closing it, the uh, gasket is um, eroded away so you'll get some leakage there so the ability to open and close um, your your um, gas and oil has been drastically improved with these flip up caps okay these are wonderful. I have them on my 550, my 62, and my 540. These are awesome. Love it. Um, felling dogs. Uh, this standard from the factory just comes with one felling dog. Okay, so we're going to change that. Does have a chain catch, metal chain catch here. Okay, let me see if I can get you guys in a little tighter. Okay, so what we have here is a chain catch. Okay, this is the plastic chain catch that's there. All right, that's there. And then behind it, okay, you have that metal chain catch. So, um, that's the sprocket that's here. Okay, the clutch is inboard. Uh, you can see the um, transfers and all that stuff. I don't, I'm not an engine dude. Uh, metal handle, uh, quick, easy, 
entrance into the engine compartment, which is incredible. I always have liked this about my Husqvarna soles. Okay. And the new architecture. Come on. Okay. It's called the high-rise filter, air filter that's in it. Okay, we have the decomp lever that's there. Now, you'll also notice now Husqvarna, and I'll show you in the other saw, but in the new saws, they run them in a 45 degree angle, which is supposed to, I don't know, they, they say it's supposed to be a little smoother, a little faster, a little better transfer of whatever. I, I don't get into it, um, but it's, it's very good. I, I like it that it's a little more compact. Um, this is the high stack air filter that comes in it. I know the original ones they had, instead of this paper, they would run a, um, they would run the, um, the mesh uh, that you can run through there. I've run these, uh, I'm running these on my 562 and they work extraordinarily well. Um, good. This is an auto-tune saw, which means that there are no high-low screws. Okay. Okay, you can see the wires in there for the auto-tune itself. You have the parts for the throttle and all that kind of fun stuff. Let me see if I can get you guys in there tight. Okay. I'm not a true engine guy itself. I do like mechanical things, but I don't know mechanical things. Um, it's really, really nice. So, oh, let me give you a look at the old version. So the old version of this saw, you only took off and you got to uh, into this point. Okay. To get to the rest of the cylinder and all that stuff, you have to take apart this upper upper cylinder. So, let's do this. Let's uh, let's get back and I'll show you the differences in between the old and the new. All right. So what we have is, in order to get this to this position, you just have to take this top cover off. It takes three screws, and this is just the uh, cover that's on there. It's a little dirty after all the years of working this saw dirty inside you'll notice that this is a vertical piston that does this where this uh, the new saw moves at a 45 degree angle so it does this as opposed to this um, the anti-vibe on this saw is very good it was way better the reason why I switched from husk from still to Husqvarna was the anti-vibration on this saw is just way light years better uh, I was running 032, 024, 26 is in the 34, I believe. It's been a while. Uh, 20 years, in fact, of running stills. And this was this was the saw that, that changed me over to, Hus uh, to Husky. The anti-vibe on this saw was light years better than anything, and the feel of it was, was way better than what I had run with still. And I was a die hard still guy and you could not get me out of it and then this came and got me so um, so you'll see the differences in between the two saws as you see the cylinder board goes in this direction where on the 372 the board goes straight up and down More stuff on there. so <clears throat> that's what you'll notice uh, on these two the bodies of the soles are about the same. The new sole is a little bit slimmer. Okay, so it's a slimmer in this part. I'm not going to run. I may run a full wrap on this, but I think I'm just going to st stick with the standard handle. Uh, it's worked so great on this one. Um, I like the fact that these are a, that the new one is a little slimmer. When I run my 550 as opposed to the 372, it's light years faster when you go to to physically turn the saw uh, when you're bucking and all that kind of stuff. So 
this saw is still front line piece. This one is just an added added uh, bonus in there. So, um, you know, old technology versus new. I just like the fact that when you take the top cover off of the new sole, it exposes you to all of the architecture, where this only exposes you to just the air cleaner itself. Now, one of the reasons I think for that is because this plastic piece will is a physical barrier of heat between the carburetor and the piston itself so that the heat that's generated from this will stay as much as it can in this area versus into here. What they do on the new saw is instead of having this cover here, they stick a barrier in between, okay? So this is the this is the side between the cold side and the hot side itself. So I'm not sure what that is. It's uh it's something. I'll tell you that. So Let's get this uh, squared down. But again, I've never had to, never had to do major service on this 372. Now I'm not a logger. I'm not running this as as a everyday thing. I'm just, you know, I'm cutting on the weekends, uh, cutting a lot of wood on the weekends. So, and this saw has never let me down ever let me down I mean the, the this new saw has big shoes to fill in the fact of the reliability uh, the grunt of this saw uh, as I understand they they are still the same but they run different uh, I know with the with the newer saws uh, the torque curve is different on these two they like to run wide open throttle all the time uh, and not really terribly dog them in, but keep that that chain speed up and they run through stuff like butter um, They are faster if you run them in the way that they're supposed to be run with Wide open throttle and keep that chain speed up as fast as you can With a load on it. I'm not saying just wide open throttle and you can hear when it's got no load on it It wants a load but not a, a heavy dog load on it where this one, it will just sit and grunt at you. Uh, this is a magnificent saw. The weights, as I understand, um, are roughly about the same. Uh, it's a 70 cc saw, so you know they're trying to make them lighter. Uh, this is again a magnesium body. It's an XP saw. The anti-vibe on these is really good. I noticed from my 562 that um, that's very good. It's a very pleasing saw. You can see the um, the felling sights itself on the saw itself those are all the way around <clears throat> look very nice uh, very easy to see when you sight down the saw itself again the fit and finish of it is just gorgeous let me put this thing back together All right, so as I'm putting this on here, um, pretty simple, you know, you put the bar on the on the studs, you put the chain on the sprocket, and run this down, and I just wanted to get into adjustments of it. Okay, you notice that the side uh, chain tensioner, way easier. I know on the older 390s and 95s and 3120s. Uh, those guys ran tensioners in the front. I'm not a real big fan of those. I understand that that system 
a lot of those guys really like it, but this is a, for me, a pretty good improvement. Okay, it's too loose, so we go in there and tighten her down. That's good to go. Use a scrunch to tighten these barn studs down, these barnets, and put a little bit of pressure on the tip of the bar when you go to tighten these down. You know, as I'm putting this bar on, I noticed I said earlier that the exhaust comes out of the front of these two ports right here. Okay, I said that. No, it doesn't. It comes out of the top here. It comes out of the top just like the 572 does. So I was incorrect in that. So I just wanted to kind of um, correct that, that it doesn't come out of the front, comes out of the top just like the 572 does. So, all right. All right, so that's the initial... Uh, impressions on the uh, 572 uh, will it replace that long lineage of that 372 that the loggers will like I know if you look on Bill uh, Buck and Billy Ray's channel he's had one uh, that is on loan from uh, a really well-known um, saw modification guy up there and uh, he really likes it um, doesn't have the bottom end torque that he's used to with his old saws itself uh, but I know he's had a lot of extensive use on the 572 that he's uh, got on loan from those guys up there um, but time will have to tell I'll have to see if I run this like I run my 62 and my 550 um, this one's gonna be just a screamer crazy screamer um, it'll It'll, um, time will tell when we go through this. It'll have to get about five or six tanks through before she really kind of wakes up and, uh, <clears throat> and, and gets moving. But I'm very excited. Oh, I'm very totally excited about this. So, um, we'll, uh, have to do a follow up video with actually sticking it actually in some wood and see where we get from it and, uh, see how well we like it. But, so far as I know of all the stuff that I've bought from Husqvarna, uh, the initial feel of it really just builds on the building blocks of uh, how well the performance is. So um, stay tuned. We'll have that out probably, um, yeah, a little bit to get, uh, get through there. But go check it out. Go check it out at your Husqvarna dealer. It's the 572. If you liked what you saw here today, please give it a thumbs up if you really like uh, the content, please think about subscribing and share it out to a guy uh, that you would like it to, or a gal, or whoever you would like to. Thanks again for joining me. We're going to go check this thing out. Have fun. Have a good day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.